Hey, good on everyone. We are back to my daily Euskera practice. Today, I really don't have very much time because, well, if you follow me on Instagram, you may remember I was having some plumbing issues at my place. Well, those plumbing issues are still happening. And so the plumber is coming over very soon and I think it's gonna be a big project. It's gonna last a while. So dudes are gonna be like making a lot of noise. So I just need to get this video done and out of the way. So that means we're gonna try doing a little power round. I feel like with Euskera, I second guess myself so much and I'm like so focused on like getting the words right and like translating everything. Like, you know what? Today, we don't have time for that. So today, I'm just gonna set 15 minutes on the clock, a little timer, and I'm just gonna get through as many of these exercises as I can in that 15 minutes and call it a day. Well not call it a day because then after that I'm going to answer a question that I got from a follower on Instagram that I thought was really interesting. So we're going to do 15 minutes of the quiz I'm working on. The last video I did, I started this revision quiz that I found from months ago. And so today I'm going to continue this quiz and get through as much as possible. All right, 15 minutes on the clock. Let's go. First exercise. Yari esaldiak eseska. Make these sentences negative. I can do this. The first one is gu osho hatorak gara. So we go gu es gara is negative osho hatorak. Next, eche surya osho politada. We're gonna say your White House is not pretty. <laughs> eche surya. Esda osho polita. Next one, Liburu Hori Osho Onada. This book is not good. Liburu Hori Esda Osho Ona. Number four, Ni Arancha Nice. Ni es nice Arancha. I guess I am not Arancha. Don't get it twisted. Next one, Mikel ne katuta dago. We want to say Mikel is not tired, so Mikel es dago ne katuta. Last one in this section, su madrilen bici sara. Um, you live in yeah, you live in Madrid, but we're saying su. E oh, oh, main verb auxiliary verb. I was on a roll. Let me think about this. Su. Es Sara Madrilen Bici. That is my guess because I haven't seen that in a while. When something new comes my way, I get a little confused with the order of the words, but for another day. Oh no, I was just saying I am so bad at remembering this, that, and that over there. How hori. Oh, Jesus, Lahan, I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's this entire section. <laughs> so I'm not even, I'm not even gonna do that because I know that would require me to look up my notes and my flashcards and like really work this out. So uh, we'll skip that because not today, not today. The next exercise then is an Isan Edo Ukan, which I feel like at this point I've, I've done a lot of these exercises. So let's go. Yari aditsa, put the verb. What? Oh, right. Sorry, I read Italian and I was like, what is this, English? But it goes, Eroma, Rome, Italian, like in Italy. Got it. So Rome is in Italy. That is an Isan, Eroma, Italian, uh, blah, blah. So <laughs> Eroma, Italian, da. That's where it is. Next, Suek Markinan BC. You live in Markina. So BC goes with Isan Suek Sarete. Suek Markinan BC Sarete. Next one, Nik S something Autorik. So, uh, so like Autorik is like any car, I think. So I don't have any car, so to have is ukan. So nik es any, I think is singular. So nik es uh, dut. 
Nik es dut autorik. Last one in this section, Eche hori surya blank. So this house, that house, something about, oh, so this house is white, because surya came after hori. So Eche hori surya da, because that's not gonna change. It's white. <laughs> oh, I thought we were almost done. No, there's two more on this side. Nik eche polita blank. So I have a pretty house because it's a nik with the K, which tells me it's ukan. So nik eche polita dut. I got one house. And then the last one, of course, grand finale has two blanks, two verbs. Su blank, banya suk blank. What? Okay. Su. What? Susara Banyasuk Dusu? Like you are, but you have? Okay, don't overthink it. I don't know what that's about, but moving on. Senbakiak numbers, let's go. Idatsi Senbakiak, write down the numbers. This is good practice, good revision. I kind of just reviewed numbers for my time telling practice a few days ago so let's let's see five is boshed 12 is hamabi 44 time to do some math okay so hoge is 20 berroge is 40 so berroge ta lao 44 111 thank you ehun Eta, I believe. Ehun eta hamaika. I think. 90. Okay, more math. Here we go. So if 40 is beroge, that means 60 is hiroroge. 40 is lauroge. So we're going lauroge. Da 10. Da hamar. 90. 20. I already did this. Hoge. 3. Hiru. 160. Okay, here we go. Ehun eta. We just said 60 was hiroroge. That sounds like a lot of R's, but okay. Nine pederazzi. 15. Hamabosht. Uh, 62. We just went over 60 was hiroroge, I think. Hiroroge. Ta B. 62. 80, we just said was lauroge. 19. Uh, oh, this is a fun one. Hemeretsi. I think, yeah, because I was like, Hamar Bederazzi? No, Hemeretsi. I think so. Cool. 10, Hamar, and 1,000. I don't remember, Mil, Mila, something similar to French, right? Okay, next page, we got a, a whole block of text. Write this text in the third person singular. <sighs> okay, here we go. Ni esqual hericoa nice. Okay, there's more, but let's just start with that. Um, so third person singular is like he, she, okay. So, Esqual hericoa da. Baina. Alemania bici nice. I live in Germany. Baina. Um, Alemania. That stays the same. Bici da. Eche chiki bat dut. I have a small house, but we want to say they have a small house. When I say they, I mean the gender neutral way of saying third person singular, not third person plural. Don't worry guys, I haven't lost it. We're still on top of it. Eche chiki bat dut. So, okay, all that changes here is the verb. So, eche chiki bat, and instead of dut, it is dut. Ah, 48. Berroge ta eight sorti. Be Berogeta sorsi urte di tut. Okay, berogeta sorsi 
urte, ok, nati tut, di tu, eta su hiltzailea nice. And I am a firefighter, but this person is su hiltzailea da. Ok. Es con duta nago. I am married. I love that married uses egon. Just by the way. I, I thought that was hilarious when I learned that. I was like, wait, so marriage is a temporary state? <laughs> That's cold. Cold! I thought. Esconduta nago. So we want to say dago. Eta bi alaba ditut. I have two daughters, uh, but they have two daughters. Bi alaba ditut. Ile horia dut. No, du. Eta begi urdiniak. Cool. Good for you. Blue eyes. Nire lana. No. Uh, ooh, how do you say his, hers? Nire, sure. Mine is drawing a blank. I'm like, hire? No, that's. Hura? No. I'm going to just leave that blank. Uh, moving on, <laughs> something about their work is hard gogora da baina asko gustatzen. Oh no, come on, that's not fair. Gustatzen sight? We haven't studied sight. <sighs> Teacher, <laughs> who wrote this? That's not fair. Okay, um, the other one, fair. Like, I should know how to say his or hers. I should know how to say that. But, like, Gustav's in sight? Come on, we talked about it for like 10 minutes and like we were joking about how hard it was. We didn't actually learn it. So I'm leaving that as a blank. Um, I mean, I'm guessing it, it, it stays the same because we're talking about like their work and not them. So I'm guessing it's already in third person singular, but I don't know. Udaran Eshqual Herida. Juaten nice. So we're going to say Juaten da. Familia. Eta lagunak ikustera. Done. That stays the same. <sighs> Fun. On the bottom, we've got pictures. I have to review my vocabulary and see how many of these food words I remember. I feel like most of the food words I remember are the ones that I've been like saying my whole life and like the new ones still haven't sunk in yet. So the first one is fish, araña, and I know that because I used to do traditional Basque folk dancing and there is something called the fish dance. I'm sure it has a formal Basque name, but we called it the fish dance and you're supposed to yell like a fisher woman or like a fisher market woman, fish market woman? Yeah, um, before and, and you're yelling about araña, come and get it. Done. Okay, next one is egg, which mm, egg, egg. Aitz is always talking about arrozeta shingar, and I think that's ham and eggs. So arrozza something. Uh, milk. I was gonna say leche. Wow. Esh. Uh, Esnia is the way Aitz says it, but I think in class it's esnea. Same, same. Uh, ooh, strawberries. Ah, I always. Marubia? Yeah, I think so. I, I'm like, I know it's a long one and it reminds me of redheads, rubia. I think that's it. Marubia. Sugar. Mm, sucria is what my dad says, but I know there's a different word for it in Batois. But I'm just going to put sucria because that's what comes to mind. Uh, chicken. Oh, oi. Ooh, it's an oi one. Oi. Oi. Ah, ah. Oh, mm, I don't know, but I do know cheese, which Aita calls gashna, in class they call it gasta, same, same. Uh, chicken is oi something. Guys, I'm, I'm, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. And then orange juice, come on. I know laranja is orange. Do I remember juice? No, and then olive oil, I think it starts with an Olio or something? I think it starts with an O. All right, time is up. 
That's all we have time for today. That was pretty good. I only have one page left, which is um, translating sentences. Otherwise, wow, oh, good for me. We just got through like two pages. So sweet, that's almost done. I think I remembered most of that stuff, which is encouraging. Um, and now before we end, I just, I got this DM from a girl named Irati on Instagram and I thought her question was really interesting and it's one that I've gotten before so I thought I'd just answer it for you here. She basically asked, because maybe you guys have been wondering, do I wish my dad had taught me Basque as a child? The obvious answer is yes because then I wouldn't have to do all of this or maybe I would be in a more like intermediate or advanced class so maybe I'd still have to work on it but like it wouldn't be so, you know, climbing uphill the entire time. But also, I feel like it's not really a question of my father teaching me Basque or not, because like, I just, it's not that he like didn't tr like talk to me in Basque. It's not like he didn't try. It was just like my environment and my family situation, like as a child, like I just didn't pick it up. Like I just didn't process it. So it's more like my development than like his efforts, I think. Um, because from what I've read, studies in the Basque country have been done looking at like language transmission among um, families. And even in the Basque country, they found that like families where both parents speak Euskara, like the kids are like very likely to speak Basque. But families with only one person who speaks Basque and the other parent doesn't, like much less likely to have Basque transmitted to the kids. And so I find the same thing here in the diaspora and also in my family in general because my mom is American, she doesn't speak Basque. And so like that's just the way it was. Um, and so I feel like I kind of don't like regret that I, like my dad didn't teach me Basque because that means my family would have had to been different. Like either my dad would have had to like marry a Basque woman and that means that I wouldn't have the wonderful mother that I have today and I wouldn't trade her for the world. Um, or that my father had been like unemployed and home with me all the time while I was doing my language formation and talking to me like constantly, just one on one. Which, I mean, I I, I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. Have you? Aita is struggling staying at home right now. Like you don't want to see Aita at home with nothing to do. Like. <laughs> Um, so I feel like just the circumstances like of our family like it just it didn't happen and and one time some guy told me um, in the Basque country someone I had just met we were talking about Basque and the language he goes it's not your fault your father kept the Basque language from you he literally phrased it like that in English so like I didn't misunderstand the way he phrased it maybe it was like lost in translation but I thought that was really messed up um, cause it's not a question of my dad keeping anything from me. Like he tried to speak to me in Basque. He still does speak to me in Basque, but it was just like growing up in the U S with an English speaking mom, like it just didn't happen. And that's the way it goes. And that's the way it goes for a lot of people in the diaspora. And according to the studies I read, a lot of families in the Basque country have this happen too. So it is what it is. I do appreciate that there's things I can do to like try to learn um, and there's plenty of things online to help with that, including starting a YouTube channel to have Basque speakers all over the world try to help you out. <laughs> um, so do I regret it? Like yes and no. Do you know what I mean? Um, if that makes sense. So if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them in future videos um, because really I find it kind of fun and also it's less time of me struggling through this and just speaking in English where I am most comfortable. So thank you so much for joining me in this daily practice. If you want to see more videos like this or learn about the Basque country, anything, subscribe to the Hello Basque YouTube channel because I'm posting videos all the time these days. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.